What am I reading? Uh, you want to just say hi. So hi again. We're now live. Hello. Hello. We have uh, Jenny with us. Misty. Misty. And Misty on the speakerphone, and we have Jen on on the screen right there. Hey, Jen. <laughs> oh, you're silent. Say something so we see you. When when this face comes up. Yes. You oh, there great. you are. You look great. Yes. <laughs> All right, so we are what? Uh, it's an interview, and we're all beginners. Uh, Jim and I started going on YouTube Live in November, so we're about nine months or eight, eight to nine months. And we have our community, which uh, we're really thankful. We have uh, about 100 of very active members, and we have another 100 of uh, viewers. And whatever we publish gets viewed in first couple of weeks we get a couple hundred views and then Hi, I can see everybody. Oh. Oh. <laughs> hey. We're we're in the middle of the intro. Just We're to, live now. We are live now, so um yeah. hang on one sec. Yeah, come up with your questions when you're ready. All right. And that is the technical thing. So we are using Google Hangouts which are free <laughs> and we have our microphone here. So we do interview normally on TV. Uh, we'll face each other, but here we have to face the microphone right here. Yes. And you know, we there is no cameraman. We are at home, Jim's home, and that's where we are. And um, it's all very simple, and we are having fun. But we are serious about what we are doing. We are into higher dimensions and extraterrestrials. Um, speak loud enough, and uh, let's have fun. Uh, we are, it's our first interview. We are. First time we have been interviewed. I interviewed a few people before, like abductees and, and others, but but that's our first together. So our thing is called humancolony.org. It's a website, the community, humancolony.org. But for to get the keyword to search on Google, I abbreviated human colony to Hucola, H U C O L O, human colony abbreviated, Hucola. And that's a unique word which allows you to find us on Facebook, on <laughs> YouTube, very easily. Stop. So that's a plug. And Jim is channeling, and he offers pri private sessions for channeling at very reasonable rates. Yes, exactly. Reasonable I to say rates, that. and he's excellent. Competitive price. Competitive uh, pricing. Yeah. We are Americans. So <laughs> Hugh uh, Hugh humancolony.org has all his numbers, uh, and you reserve this channeling mm -hmm. session with him, and you can speak to our extraterrestrial friends live. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's an experience. And also, you can join our free Saturday webinars, and if you're lucky, we have like 30 people competing for spaces at 10 a.m. on Saturday, Eastern Standard Time, New York time. Join us on Google Hangouts, and you have a chance to ask a question to extraterrestrials. And now we'll welcome our interviewers. Um, Jamie, Jen, and Misty, introduce your project. It would be advertisement for your project as well. Yes. This is Jamie. My name is Jamie DeMarco, and I am one of the co-founders for the Zenzook Project, which, um, while this is coming out live today, we will be debuting that on August 9th on Saturday. Um, Jennifer Gilroy and Misty Gersley are my other partners in crime doing this, and I'm going to let Jen uh, take it away with just kind of describing what we do. Very simple. Um, we'll read ahead. <laughs> uh, I'm Jennifer. Uh, we're a multimedia website focused on publishing and producing spiritual works that encourage education and increase awareness about the nature of the soul and its connections to the matrix of life. So we explored spirit channeling, the afterlife, the intergalactic universe and multiverses, alternative healing modalities, paranormal, paranormal and supernatural phenomena through creative expression, articles, research interviews, and our individual Cool. Yeah. So you're just starting. How long do you know each other? Um, Missy and I have known each other um, 30 years, like 30 years. Um, when she was, and you know, we've been experiencing spiritual phenomenon on and off throughout our friendship, throughout our lives. Um, and Jen and I and Missy all just met um, through the channeling era plot. We'll give them a little plug. Um, and I think Jen and I, maybe six or seven months, have known each other and just really connected. Um, she's a fabulous channeler as oh, well. You're um, a channeler, I didn't yeah. know yet. Oh wow! She's cool. um, she's amazing. Um, she's I have a site. I'm a psychic medium channel. Um, I have a site um, called Underground Realmway on WordPress. Um, 
also a few other blogs that deal with spirituality and other subjects. Um, and then I started teaming up with the girls to work on their projects. So, so uh, you offer private sessions as well? I do. Mm -hmm. How people find you? Underground? Underground Realmway. Uh, dot wordpress.com also at um, uh, trying to think of uh, you can email me at g -G -N -N -I -G -U -I -L 1080 at gmail.com um, my my kind of commercial website I've just started offering um, bookings because I've kind of been learning in different areas um, and channeling for a while, but didn't really want to step into it. But um, anyway, you can find me through. The, All right, uh, under our video right here, we will post the link to your site so people uh, can go. Yes, fabulous. Yeah, and who do you uh, who do you channel spirits yes. or? Uh, uh, you know, when I I speak directly to God um, all the time, and uh, kind of my niche is celebrities, performers, but I also speak anybody that's kind of been in the spotlight. Um, but I do work a lot with Eric from the Channeling Eric blog, um, and so a lot of people um, from that, spirits that have loved ones that work with that group, um, also kind of learn with the other work I do on my Jenny Prince blog, which is a little bit different, but I mean, we're talking about aliens here, so some people can understand how <laughs> yes. you know things may seem odd, but you know, you don't really understand the truth until you know. Exactly. So today we're doing uh, a new thing. Look, normally, Jim channels every every show we have, but today we don't channel. No. Today we speak about what we learn there, which is we're in great position. Yes. I mean, when you're first channeling, you're not there, so how do you know what has been said? You go back and watch the video. You watch the video. <laughs> <laughs> and now you get to, yeah. you know, you get to see it from your standpoint too. Um, well, I, but I don't like to watch my videos. I just listen to them because the hand mo motions and facial expressions are a little too much for me. So yeah. I, uh, I just rather listen to it. So. But also, you have a telephone li line up there. Whenever you need yeah. to ask a question, you just ask them, and they tell. Well, them. a lot of times, sometimes it takes a few days for them to answer them. Yeah, I mean. yeah, I know what you mean. And I had some footage from last summer that was a little amped up when I was inhabited, and it took me a while to be able to look at it. Some of it's still, I'm just like, that's just not me. It's just yeah, it wasn't <laughs> you. It's not you, and you, you look odd because with Lakesh, he comes into your body, and he, his hands go out to like about here, and the rest of your hands is like sort of limp. But he learns how to control them and stuff, so. But you look weird with your hands moving all around, so. Yeah, it's a different face. I'm so, what have uh, prompted you to go with your project? I mean, you knew each other for a long time, and finally you are out there, out here. It's been on the back burner for Missy and I for um, many years. Um, I think what it is is the, that we're approaching a spiritual renaissance, and um, there's a huge movement going on, and we're all scattered. We're all in different corners, and we all have different experiences. And there's a norm out there that just isn't the norm. You can't normalize spiritual experience. You can't standardize it. And for us, it's about, you know, we're not newbies. We're not, like, advanced. We're kind of in the middle. We're still living our human lives. And we want to bring people together. And we want to share our experiences. We want to meet great people like you and help people not feel alone. But, you know, help people understand, too, that you can't just read a book and know this. Like, this is experiential all the way. Like, mm -hmm. books are the aftermath. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of people experiencing that right now. And, and we're all mishmash together. And this is just a way for us to come together and talk about um, what it means to overcome humanity to a point where you can accept and embrace the internalness of your being. Um, and then, you know, how to spirit channel who's doing it, you know, and how it's being done, especially if you've got somebody who can communicate with spirits and is terrified of it, um, or people who have been doing it for a long time and just, you know, want to offer their teachings and whatnot. Um, and then creatively, too, um, we're part publishing press, so we're really looking pe for people to, um, we'll be producing digital short movies in 2015 to wow. 2016. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, and just hold me, just like this, just in your, you know, we're not looking for high definition right now because we're all poor. 
Uh, <laughs> and this is a grassroots movement. I want to see how creative you can get. All of us do. Um, and I'm a writer. Misty's a writer. Um, Jen, he's a writer. He's a writer. Um, you know, so we're, we Misty has owned her own publishing press, um, Witherson, um, and was very successful with that. And this is her kind of taking it to the next level too. Um, and reviewing what's out there too. What are the books that are out there? What are the conferences that are out there? And getting people to talk about it. And I think it's a way to create accountability too. Like have integrity. You know. Um, you know. Be be authentic. You know, a lot mm -hmm. of people aren't, and a lot, but more people are, and so we're we're pushing for that integrity. Let's pick up on your great statement. You can't read the book; right. you have to experience it. Jim, what would you say? About it? I said you you would have to experience it first. But the things that come out in the book are your afterthoughts, your the thoughts that are the most important stick with you mm -hmm. and become part of your life, actually. So those are the training parts of the experience when you can write a book and then have that train right. someone like else and that. let them let them understand what you're feeling so that they don't feel so uh, out there so they can connect with you. When you say you can you can read a book and become an experiencer, you kind of undermine your publishing thing. I think reading no. a book is really important. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> really it's important. So <laughs> yes. Tell we're not in it to make money. Yes. <laughs> well, reading the book is very important. But it yes. is, because I like how he puts that. It is. It's a collection of the experience because you get to experience it from a different perspective. Right. So do your homework. Read yeah, the book. read the book. Watch it's YouTube. Your homework. Do your homework because otherwise you get scared. True. Knowledge gives you. Bravery, basically, and also reading really, the book. I like it. Knowledge gives you bravery. I like that a lot. It's, it's not me. I just cite someone. So, <laughs> um, read the book and visit our site, and that primes you. That connects you to the new reality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have the community, and it started. That might be your first question, but it started from an invitation from our it's alien right. friend. Visit us up there, and there is a lot of people who really wish to visit them up there. Some want to be taken forever. So the invitation came, and I said, how about you apply through our website? And the aliens with their advanced technology can read your applications. They can, I, I created an email account for the aliens. Sign up to go at gmail.com. You know, that's one of my best inventions. Just create an email. It's a mailbox. There is no email line there. They just kind of can use their technology to read this email. So people who write to that email sign up to go at gmail.com. Get taken. And they, yes. And have experiences. And have experiences, but they are having trouble remembering them at this point. Some of them do. Some no. some remember them. Yeah, I mean, some do. They, as soon as they send the, the, the application, the same night or next couple nights, they get an experience. Mostly, it's not physical; it's spiritual. But right, because mm -hmm. you're you're popping out of your body and uh -huh. you're, you're yes. experiencing, like you're, and that's yeah. why you have trouble remembering. Is because the yeah. density of coming back into your body. Well, yes, I, would say, I, I can would, explain that yeah. in more detail later. But <laughs> there is more there. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, a dream about being taken there could be misinterpreted. Right, you just kind of apply, and then you get excited, and you dream about it. Mm -hmm. but how about speaking galactic language? People yeah. who join our site first ask to be taken or to be part of the community, and then they start speaking galactic language. That is something we have on YouTube. It's it's something unmistakable. And then mm -hmm. even more, That's some of them who spoke galactic languages start becoming channelers. We have. In the last two and a half months, we got about seven channelers born out of many, out of many, seven channelers. Mm -hmm. Well, now channel, like they have the telephone line to God, basically. And that is read the book first, and then you get experience. And that experience and is... And you get brave. Yes. Like you, yeah, and you get brave, and you <laughs> and go yeah, out there. Exactly. I there think this go. is a perfect segue. John, if you want to start with our first question. Okay. Uh, he answered all the questions. Yeah. <laughs> I think he did. Let's get to the Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's very good. With this the first one is, it's, it's, it's a few together, um, how would you describe our intergalactic neighborhood, who's out there, what is their preferred method of communication, like how much involvement do they have with us and vice versa on a physical and 
energetic level or also working with us as spirit, on spiritual levels? I will let you start with one comment. It is diverse, and if you look at different angles, you get different pictures. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is very diverse out there. There's a lot of questions there, so this might take a while. No. <laughs> yeah, we might get no. well, out there. I yeah. Guess. Yeah, who, um, the people that we deal with, with, yeah, we're work, working with the uh, Federation or Alliance of Grukfiknir, and they are five different species. They are uh, Arcturian, Yagil, Lyran, Pleiadian, and friendly reptilians, which just joined them within the last few months in their alliance. They do not want to be named because a name for the reptilian alliance, uh, for the reptilian, there's five different species of reptilians that I know of. They do not want to give a name for their species because it would denote a bad connotation joining the the alliance, and they don't want that. They want to be called friendly reptilians. So um, there are others out there. There's people from Orion, Sirius. Uh, I'm not sure where the Sasani, Chikanis are from, what planet, I'm not sure. The Blues. Um, but there's many, many different species yeah, Sasani out there. are from a planet called E. Sasani. E. Sasani, okay. And then there's reptilians. There's insectoids, and there's there's a uh, actually beings living under the the Earth's surface, um, as told by many legends and things of, from the past. But uh, according to what we've learned, some of those are true. So let's focus on the on the ones who are recently are most really yeah, yes. really interacting, really interacting, really interactive are the blues which they have three planets in the Pleiadian system, the uh, Yigil, the Octorians, the Lyrans, uh, those are the ones oh, that... Oh, about Pleiadians. That's what I said. Did I say? No, I didn't mention Pleiadians. Oh, Pleiadians. And uh, <clears throat> it's it's hard to remember them all because they That's are very... Four. Yeah. Four that, that interact with me as well as an occasional reptilian or uh, we had Sentia from Sirius. And we had one person from that was we don't know what species they were. Yeah, we spoke to many. Uh, yeah. You speak about active speaking to you. We have a blue from a known planet in Pleiades, is a lone star in Pleiades. Who speak, speaks a lot to us. Yes, but his name is Lakesh. Let's correct yeah. it for what's important for the Earth. Like, like it, uh, you said, the, you call the blues as most influential. They unfortunately they have. Neutrality policy. Yeah. So they're not as involved as Pleiadians, Lyrans, and Yael. So right. let's correct it. So the blues well, are important for us, but not for the planet yet. They welcome them, but not yet. Oh, so yeah. Who is most active on the planet? Um, that's a good question because I think that there's a lot of them that are very active on the planet. But from the spaceship, I think that it's the the uh, near for <coughs> us. What would you say about that? Uh, reptilians are very active. Well, yes. They're on the planet. Reptilians right. are, they say, they are different dimension, but they are very involved in everything well, that happens yes. here. Everything. They walk on the They're streets, the camouflaged. They uh, speak to our rulers, uh, financial and political and military. And they're especially interested in, in, in military. Uh, reptilians are involved. Good, good ones and bad ones. The Aegeans are very involved. Yes. Um, Yael and Gray. So Yael are a hybrid human, Earth human, and Zeta Gray hybrid. And they have a lot other species, like other species also involved. But but these are friendly Grays, which we trust and love. So Yael are our friends. And they're also called Shalanaya. And they are the ones which are elected by other species to be first in an official conference. Yes. And that's why we are talking primarily to them, helping them to plan that contact. And, okay, how they interact with us, they are actually in a ship around the planet that um, is helping us with our weather, our seismic problems, our uh, volcanic problems, the, the axis problems, as 
I don't know how well it is known that the axis is off about three degrees, and that's causing weather problems and all these different problems on the Earth to stir up a little bit more. And plus, we got hit from energy from the center of the galaxy on 12-21-12, because that was the official start start of the uh, ascension predicted by whoever. And... um, it, it affects us as well. And so if you've noticed all our bad weather and crazy weather and things that are just happening that don't usually happen within the last three or four years, it's, they're really trying to help us uh, keep that in check, but it's, it's going to get worse. So they keep telling us, oh, they're very, very worried right now about the West Coast. And they were worried. They are getting pummeled with a yeah. lot of different... Yeah. So I guess that's still answer to the question of who is out there because we get a lot of help from out there from different dimensions. Mm -hmm. Our you know, in uh, dimensions are numbered by many people differently, but our friends call us third dimension and them uh, fourth dimension. So we get a lot of help from fourth dimension and from dimensions above as well. Arcturians are. Close to fifth, so four, four, four point nine or something. They're multidimensional, so we get dimension uh, help from many dimensions, and they help us to make it. Help, help us yeah. to make the ascension, which we will define the next answers, right? Yes. I guess we are. Let and, me ask. Let me like dovetail a little bit. Um, how about agreements, like um, the treaties, or like how much interaction are they allowed to have? It sounds like from what you're saying, like some have interactions a lot with like on a personal level, and some have it more on a socio-political level. Um, mm-hmm. Are there intergalactic treaties like helping promote, you know, helping to keep the people who may want to develop us or who may want yes. to push us into contact versus those who are like, you know, they need a little while longer. Yes. How is that? How? What do you get well, with that? We there are some galactic rules and regulations that okay. all must follow, and if they break them, there will be. Uh, there's uh, consequences. We don't know what those consequences are. However, they are not. It's like on Star Trek, the Prime Directive, or right, whatever. Right. But there is such a thing with the galactic uh, policy and protocol. They they do not want people just rushing uh, aliens just rushing in and doing whatever they want. We're sort of protected because of what we're going through. We're headed for our next evolution soon because telepathy is becoming more a part of our lives. It is. And um, you gotta know that it is. And so there's they're looking at a species that is going to become telepathic within the next couple hundred years. And so they're protecting us, and they're and the and the rules and regulations apply to everyone. No one can break us as well. Right. right. Exactly. Okay. So. Um, so this is an exciting time, really, because before that, for us, we weren't being protected until they realized that we were going through this uh, ascension state, which is our evolution state. So, um, yes, act- great answer. Yeah, I agree. You covered a lot of ground yeah. with that. So, are they um, allowed? Yeah, who? How? Are, do you know any of the workings of like um, right now? Are they basically like Earth on hold? Mm-hmm. Let them develop. We're going to help them with their environment. We're going to help them kind of get through some of these rougher times yes. and help them understand that they are also, like humans are also multidimensional beings, Correct. and we're unlocking that right now. Right. Yes. And so they're not interfering in a way where they're like in the sky like, hey, barbecue right. in our spaceship by yeah. Friday, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's a meet and greet. Oh, they, they do, they do actually. Uh, I mean, <laughs> He's like, what if, you, if you look I up, <laughs> on, on YouTube, there is now a lot of weekly summaries of sightings, weekly now. Right. There is a, a basically a couple channels which look all around YouTube for new sightings and they compile it into nice compilation. So if you wish to see the sightings, that's you know, the place to go. We, weekly summary of uh, every week there are beautiful, wonderful sightings. Channelings show that there is some sort of um, collective decision on a higher dimensional level. It's like human collective, Syrian collective. 
create and collective actuary and collective deciding, how many sightings do they permit this month? And they do it just right to awaken as many humans as possible without causing the complete collapse of the economy. Because if they show up just a bit much, a bit more, that would cause people say, hey, there are aliens out there. Like, you know, people who are not ready. Everybody, the mass media. I don't need to pay my taxes. <laughs> and then, yeah, and the next right. thing, if aliens are there, they have the technology to come here. If they have the technology to come here, and why you know, do we pay taxes to right. military? Because we are right. developing the technologies which are way below, way, 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 way below, right? right. And that, you know, if taxes are not paid, if military are under scrutiny. We don't even know how to feed the poor. I mean, quite <laughs> yeah. honestly, we, right. we don't even know how to take care. We're at an interspecies level. We're constantly at war. We're sacrificing children to our political and financial needs. And we're still trying to wrap our heads around how to take care of each other. Can and you then, explain sacrificing children? I, I, it, doesn't, it didn't sound right. That was probably a very, yeah. Well, I just think of um, what's happening in the Middle East. I think about what's happening yes. at the border. You know, like children oh. are suddenly at the forefront of a lot of crises going on globally right. right now. And we're not, we're kind of so dismissive about it. Right, we as humankind. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not them. No, us as humanity, as like an <laughs> inner species, like we right. can't figure it out right now to save our life, literally to save but, our freaking lives. But that's what we're doing right now. Right. So, like, this is to, to connect like the whole world with uh, like thoughts, so that we can, uh, so that we can be more the, of a community right. instead of uh, individual. So I mean, yeah. being individual is good. Right. But being a community that helps each other is better, even. Right. But, and you still retain your you individuality. Correct. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So answering your previous question, uh, what are they permitted to do? So they're permitted to do so much of uh, sighting, UFO sighting, okay. right? They are permitted to do lots of channelings. So people start channeling that increases exponentially. It increases greatly last month. People start channeling because basically it's not a complete proof. You're not permitted. They still. The main reason is we're here for experience. We come here to get this ascension experience, third dimensional experience. And the experience, the key of this experience as a soul is that you don't get a complete proof. You have to make a leap of faith and choose <laughs> without proof. If they give you a miracle, proof of miracle, then it's not an experience of choosing, right? right. You already know the answer. We, I, I still didn't see any UFOs. I mean, they didn't give me UFOs. I don't hear voices in my head. I invite them. I don't hear them. You already believe. I already believe. <laughs> I made my, my, my yeah. choice. Why, why do they give me more? But, yeah. right. but they keep everybody on their borderline between so, so you can make a choice. Every day you have to make a choice. Is it all thinking, new thinking, four dimensional, four we make, make, the, make this choice all the time. So they give you channeling because it's not a proof for you. And they speak to our governments, Gorfitnir, Pleiadians, Yael, uh, Arcturians, the Zetas, Zeta Grays, the Rixilia. They speak through different channels, and all of them kind of offer their help. But basically, the latest news are our governments say, all you say is great. Yes, the economy is, every country is in the depth, so the economy needs fixing. but. How about you do that in the next generation? We will lose a lot and we will risk too much if you do it not right now. How right. about our you know, next election, next generation, not now. I'm not ready. I'm under pressure. And they get it all the time. They keep pro proposing and they keep getting, uh, yes, we agree. If it happens, I will be on your side. But I wouldn't do the first step. That's the typical answer. So we can't get cooperation from our world governments to actually make the changes that would make our world a better place and more you accessible would, to an interface. They would lose community. their fortunes. They would lose their powers. They would lose uh, the things that they hold dear right, right. now. Our, right. our golden calves, basically. Right. The other things that they're allowed to do is right now there are alien videos on YouTube. Yeah, there has been a lot of disclosure over the past, I'd say, four or five years from governments that you never thought would happen. 
but they are now becoming, they are making videos at the Union Colonies to show on YouTube okay. for people to okay. be less afraid and just run into them and listen to them and say, huh, I wonder if that was real or not. But what it does is speaks to the subconscious. There's subliminal messages in there that helps them calm down about, um, you know, meeting an alien mm -hmm. or being afraid of aliens. So they they're putting out these uh, actual videos that are not that are very harmless, and they prove that there's aliens there, but nobody like you or I couldn't prove it, but the government could. But um, that we were going, oh, that was a great little video from who made that, you know. But uh, it doesn't say. Men in black will be calling you. <laughs> so, uh, but um, they're actually making the effort to cause and help the cause of peace. But it's still not a proof because people say, oh, look at the animation these days. It's so or fantastic. Uh, yeah. It's all photoshopped or whatever. So it's still not a real proof. There was an interesting experiment that Jörg Fittnir, Yael did. They put out the videos, but not to everybody, to specific individuals who were sitting somewhere in the middle of nowhere. So even if they got the proof, they couldn't distribute it everywhere. So in the historical channel, they tweaked their narration. They included the videos in historical channel, ancient aliens. They included some videos of aliens and proofs that they would show to the humanity, to see, to gauge the, the human response. So some people were shown that, but but no one else. And when they spoke to neighbors, you know, they had different channels channeling to them through television, right? So right. so tricks like that they do, but uh, they still kind of, they are cal recalculating when the Earth will be ready for the open contact and for the real, true open disclosure. and. So far, it's you know every time every every time it's a, a year from now, not very far, bro, but the, the deadline is moving and moving. They did that also on Cosmos, the TV program. Yeah, with uh, um, they actually for some people gave them a, a five second glimpse of an alien <laughs> walking across the screen or something, and some people saw it, and but most people did it. So, but some people actually saw that, and they said in one of the channelings that they were going to do something on Cosmos. So and it did happen for some people. So we got reports that that, that they did see an alien for like a few seconds during the Cosmos program. So uh, and most people didn't see So they so they're here. So yeah. they're here and they're making contact and they're making awareness but it's in very subtle almost like um I think of social experiments, just you know, just to kind of gauge the readiness. Not intrusive, not exactly. harmful, but just I like how you say that, just to kind of gauge the readiness. Are they going to freak out, or are they like, right, huh, exactly. you know, and like I see kind of, people changing. Kids yeah. come from kindergarten and bring picture of aliens. They have like UFO week or some alien week. Right. And, you yes. know, you walk around across a school that is a lot of flying saucers of children's right. drawings. Yes. On, on advertisement, like you drive on highway and they give the mess the message which you normally would get in channel. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> like. Yes. John, do you have more questions for us? Yeah. Um, when it comes to the as a human alien colony organization perspective, what are we as humans um, contributing to this organization? What is the goal of our work? Um, and is there a larger goal to what we're doing now? I will start with uh, definitions and then let Jim <clears throat> tell the story. <clears throat> so the site humancolony.org is not that we are human colony. It's human colony is up there. We are. It's our goal. It's what we are about. But we are a ground team. We are a community, grassroots community. We are not human colony. We are the ones which the support the human colony up there. Now, the, the colony is the word I chose because it sounded proud, but in fact it's more like a playground. It's human playground up there. The aliens host the playground. They invite people to visit, but you know they are hosts. So it's not we are colonizing the space. It's we are being let in tiny amounts, you know, few people at a time. We are let out on their ships, and uh, and we started a contact up there. 
it's, it's uh, unofficial or partly official, but it's not on, in the open. It's, it's a different type of contact. But the contact is already happening. So it's like a playground, a research lab, a settlement. Uh, there is one constant settler who moved, as they say, forever, one term. He is not missed here because he was lonely and nobody, like, he didn't communicate to anyone. So he was just taken. So we have one colonist up there, colonist up there. Uh, there are col other colonies other than this Gurkhitnir colonies, um, human colonies. Like, uh, we spoke to a certain Andromeda civilization. Andromeda is a galaxy. Like, we are Milky Way galaxy. Andromeda is a different galaxy. But we spoke through channeling. And they didn't say the name of the star, but you know we, we call this planet Utopia Five just to re as a reference. Uh, they have strangely they have Pleiadian culture here from our Pleiades, from our galaxy, uh, which uh, two thousand years ago took human slaves from Rome, Romans. And uh, at some point there was a liberation, like here, and now they are free citizens. So Homo sapiens from Earth is living on another planet and they live in wonderful four-dimensional life. So it's sort of a human colony. So if the Earth, God forbid, uh, ends, ends here, the civilization ends here, we still have lots of other places where our DNA is kind of distributed and saved. So we don't need to freeze it anywhere on, on other planets. It's already done for us. But, but these colonies... <clears throat> Intended to develop the first contact. That's the main reason. It's okay. a very, very great difference. Mm -hmm. So this human playground, human colony. The goal of it is to communicate and especially telepathy. Now Jimmy can tell whole story. Well, okay. There's three colonies there, but they were by suggestions of Max. They did have colonies up there before, but they failed because the communication was so bad between alien and human, they couldn't really communicate. Humans are so diverse and emotionally strong where aliens are more connected as a community because they have telepathy, they can they can actually become more alike in some ways. They're still individuals but they become more alike. So I just wanted to start with that because the way that the colony started was that they found some human telepathic people and they were able to find out what humans were all about from these people and start to learn of our diversity and thought patterns and things of that nature and how to teach telepathy because after a while they became uh, they learned each other so that was our help for the um, that was our help in the way of uh, letting the, the aliens know who we really were, and then um, of course they've been through our future uh, past. Uh, they've landed many times in the past, and they put things on the head to communicate through, and so. But um, but this is the most successful they've been with communicating with the Earth. And they have three colonies. One, the first colony is for uh, teaching galactic languages and telepathy. The second one is for health and uh, fitness. And the third colony is for making the videos, uh, which they put on YouTube. Believe it or not, it takes probably five or six hundred hours of video for them to get something work that's workable for for our, for human. Uh, visual use. So, uh, because there's so much controversy about what should be said and what should not be said, what should be shown and what should be shown, what faces to be on there, what, la 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 la. They go on forever and ever. It's a, um, it's um. So they're very careful. Yes, they're very, very careful, careful. Very careful. And so, um, the th the these three colonies, people come to and they learn these things. They learn how to become more telepathic. They learn how to speak their language better and interpret it. But a lot of it, when they come back, they're only gone for a few hours on our time. But there it seems like days and days. It could be like five days, you know. Okay, right. But when they come back, they have to be able to pick up where they left off. So they, they put that 
information back from when they were taken and put it back. And that's why a lot of the experience is lost because that sort of wipes things out a little okay. bit. Um, so they, so basically what they do, so you have an experience, and it's typically a spiritual experience. Yes, where you're, right, your you go out of your body. Right. And then um, you work together, you play together, and then they kind of unintentionally end up not wiping it, but it kind of, you, your access to it is a lot more difficult or a lot because of the, the Because of how clear you have to be when you come back. Okay. Because you're you went we're only gone a couple hours and so if you're up there a week, how are you gonna know exactly where you were when you came back? So oh, excellent, excellent. Do you know what I'm yeah, saying? It's I didn't like even uh, consider that, right. But they said, Oh, because when they come back they have to act normal and continue Just what they were right doing. Yeah, so yeah. they they put they take that last thought and re put it in re uh simulate it at the end, and so you know you you're leaving off exactly, going about exactly where you left off, and so that memory of the week is sort of pushed in the background, and 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 a lot of times pushed to the subconscious. Well, let me let me comment here. I mean, there is a lot of viewers who are still skeptical. You know, how do we know that we are going to the colonies? How do we do, we, do we know that right. our members are going to the colonies mm -hmm. first? And then, in the whole idea, I mean. People try to fly to the moon, to the Mars, and now we're saying that we are, you know, going up and down. So, and yeah. <laughs> uh, one thing is, you know, the aliens are higher dimensional. So when you go to meet them face to face, you have to raise in your in your dimension, yeah. and they have to step down in their dimensional thing. So, so the meeting happens halfway somewhere, 3.5, 3.8, whatever dimension. Consider that. So when you go, come back here. Person is disappointed. So heavy here. Yeah. It is. People I've say I was myself, I was yes. in in the paradise and now what? Now I'm back here. It's so you know every time I come back, it's a disappointment. It's not that I remember much, but whatever I remember, it was happiness. It's and very here, good altering. And here, oh, I'm back again. And, and my feeling is like there I'm awake, and here I I get to sleep. But I finally get to sleep. I end up here. Yeah. Second thing is, like, you know about abductees, alien abductees. What's the difference? One of our questions, yeah. But the only difference is that they didn't physically, their physical mind didn't volunteer to go there. Most of, many of them. But those who volunteered called abductees, but, you know, most of abductees were taken without consent. And I was adamant, no exceptions, people who had been taken have to volunteer and Whenever they want to stop, they can stop at any time. And that took a lot of convincing. You know, from between May and September, <clears throat> I was saying, no, 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 you misunderstood. It would be, it doesn't have to be on the soul level. It has to be physical mind. It has to be aware. And clear. now they ask physically, vocally, to say, yes, I agree. And it's not only agree in general. I have to agree to this specific. So you have to be aware of the condition. Conditions are rational. There is nothing special. At some point, they created a colony, whatever number it is, number four or five, for looking at psychiatric cases. There's a lot of things they want. They do medicine. They treat things. They have to understand how to help humans, how we designed. And um, so they wanted to treat psychiatric patients. And for them, they made an exception. They didn't take consent. I was like really. Uh, push and say, no, 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 we have to close that and uh, leave, uh, keep only people who give consent. So, so and one thing when you speak to aliens, they take you literally. They were ready to close in seconds. You know, that's yes. what they do. So I said, no, 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 you have two weeks. So when you say you have to close it, I said, you know, give them like maybe six, I gave them a certain number of weeks, I don't remember, maybe four weeks. Four weeks, speak to these guys and whoever agrees, actually 90% of uh, uh, not cases, how do you call them? Uh, patients. Yes. <laughs> uh, patients. Sure patients uh, agreed to stay <laughs> to stay that. and be treated because actually the treatment is great and it's you know it's happiness. We we'll need an editor for that. But but uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, keep going. I I I, no, I, I understand what you're saying. I no, am no, no, a mental health going. professional um, day job and from an engagement standpoint, um, and to kind of to take this up a level, the, the human mind, the animal mind, I'll call it, um, 
needs to be engaged yes. from a human standpoint in order for the integration coming through all the dimensions of your being to be as effective as possible. So thank you for that. And we'll definitely get more into um, abductees um, and abductions versus, you know, and how that's evolved. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, yes. And then I can see what you're saying. So they'll take people who are suffering from mental health disorders and say, hey, we've got treatment for you. Um, and, and I can see that working, too, because a lot of the harder to cure, the harder to treat mental health disorders are because we don't have the res we have the right. resources, but it's not a it's not a medically approved, you know, right. what? Um, to to help with people like that. So that's really fascinating and kind of heartening that they're taking an. You understand, right? Yeah. Uh, well, one of my questions was, what kind of treatments do you use? And to my surprise, I was thinking they do only transdimensional major things like light and my like energy healing. Well, yeah. use chemicals too. Because they're effective, yeah. because it's a biology. Well, we have a biology that's yeah. impacting our mental health as well. And what they discovered was some of these people were not mentally ill. They had they were higher dimensional beings kind of trying that to could not live in the third dimension. I, and I see that a lot too. Yeah. yeah. So and this is one of the reasons why they were checking for that too, because there are some that are would be considered mentally ill. But they have actually their third eye is wide open, and they do not see the things that we see and react to the things that we react to. They react to a different dimension, a different set of of reality. Um, reality. Yeah. So um, this is one of one thing that they were discovering about our mentally ill. Now let me connect a few points. You will yes. get a great picture just from this couple points: psychiatric patients, volunteers and the convent. Okay. Now as you know about this colonies, can you imagine the aliens not doing that? That's a really good point. I mean, it's right. so obvious now right. that, you know, there is so many volunteers. Why wouldn't they help us advance our, our yes. techniques? Right. So, um, and after the contact happens, like think a year ago, after the contact, United Nations is our official representative. Wouldn't it be obvious to have some of their people up there, and vice or maybe versa, yeah. vice versa? And how many of them are crazy? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we have real practical problem. If they yes. bring right. some of our really of our politicians, they would have mental breakdowns all the time, right? right. Especially when meeting like really tall or really yes. scary-looking aliens. Yes, I mean. No. They have to give them some sort of, I mean, they already had yeah. that problem, you know, people, <laughs> but, uh, the worst thing was that, you know, that case illustrates, they took, they wanted a diversity, they want a sample of human population, they took some Aboriginal person from Australia, just from the tribe, who was a shaman, telepathic, very advanced shaman. We could do that. They took him, he saw the gods, what he did, he curled in their fetus position, and lay completely upset crying for about three days. They couldn't bring him to senses at all. He met gods and that was a rational thing for him to do just to be completely out of his mind. Okay, they gave up, brought him back, you know, thinking that all the technology cannot solve the problem. And he just announced happily that he met gods and he is now in higher hierarchical position and he spoke to God. And he was so completely he, cured by, by returning. Mm -hmm. But you know, they meet cases like that often. Like people come there and behave too, differently. Yeah, I can see exactly. Like the, mm -hmm. there, some of them are just. So, right. so we connect the points. Some of them are. So, yeah, so, so thinking after contact, they will bring people who are not advanced volunteers. They will bring people just, you know, military generals or diplomats or celebrities and they have to keep them sort of normal. Yeah. Right, and that makes sense too. All right, please go over there. All right. Jen, <laughs> what, what other questions do we have for you? Was that what On, a, on yeah. a more personal level, what was um, the influence of ETs and that type of phenomenon on your life, specifically like when you were growing up? Um, ah, great question. I was brought up in a very religious family and I had, um, when I went to religious college, I had many telepathic 
and um, telekinetic experiences, but I did not blame them on aliens. I thought they were from evil spirits because that's what I was taught. So, straight up. And um, so, I rejected them, renounced them, all, all that bad stuff. I could, I could name about ten different situations where I would have uh, powers that I didn't know how to control. Um, and as time went on, things in my life were showing me that I should, that was the wrong thing to do to reject those things. Until I'm here today, within the last few years, within the last three years, I discovered Reiki, which helped me get back to I to some psychic things and channeling. I never knew what channeling was because it was against religion and entirely. So, but now I'm starting to open up as the person that I should be. But it's not all back yet. I don't have telekinetic powers or anything like that anymore. But maybe someday. Jen, what what answer to that question? What and what about you, Max? What was and what answer first? You you what's your uh, childhood uh, youth experience as with extra okay. Um yeah. I was raised Catholic, um, and I went to Catholic private Catholic school. Um, I have like nuns in the family, a deacon. My uncle's a deacon of the church, so it's kind of strict. Um, so I always knew as a young girl, like something's up, you know. This there's something, you know. It was just normal, like because you weren't taught against it because you you didn't know either way, right? So mm -hmm. I would think like which which woman in the family is going to teach me these things, you know? Um, but you know, just kind of I was just kind of told like I'm too young to know. Um, and I'd had a dream as a child about meeting God. I kind of talked about that earlier. Um, and all of that just as life went on, you know, you just have, you learn to deny it. So you pile stuff on top. So it gets it gets muted and you don't even think about it because the rest of the world doesn't, doesn't think about it at all. Um, until I, I got into doing yoga um, to heal my body physically. Um, after my divorce, I moved back home, started doing yoga. Um, and I always had a connection to God as a little girl. Um, I, I couldn't talk about my religion. It was just uh, more of a culture like you just believe. So I, I, I would pray to God rather than Jesus. I just felt like that was idolizing man. So I would just, why do I need a middleman? I'll just go to God. So I'd always kind of kept that connection to myself. And I'd go to church because it was nice, the ritual. And then I realized, you know, doing yoga, oh, well, that, that is church, but we're moving our bodies. And why weren't we allowed to move our bodies? And why was this tool taken out of the, the trinity, you know, body, mind, and spirit? Um, and then you just kind of realize, oh, well, it's the control thing, you know, uh, I'm taking back control. And so I've kind of been feeling the energy. I just kind of put God back off as this physical element, you know. Um, and, and, and then questioning, is there a God, is there not? Um, and just was kind of content with it just being energy. And then he came to me and spoke to me. I heard his voice for three days, and it it opened me up to telepathy with the other spirits. And I'd had one incident of telepathy at the age of 16 trying acid LSD when I was a little younger. Um, and when it happened, I was just like, oh, my gosh, it's just like that. But when I heard God's voice, it was out loud. It was audible in the room. And he's shown me miracles since that's happened, um, like, you know, with electronics, changing songs on my iPod just by pointing at it, kind of showing me that once we shed this density – with our light bodies, the way that we can direct and harness energy through right. our system um, and, and use it to our benefit. We only carry all this stuff around, phones and computers, and we can just zip, 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 and, you know, it's all, it's amazing what we're capable of. Um, but then I kind of had to be lowered back into the vibe to deal with this world. So I kind of, then I was isolated for a few years, learning my crafts and not really being, being allowed to be influenced by other people kind of who, study it, you know what I mean? I was kind of taught purely by spirit um, and then have, you know, kind of come into the group. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of been my life for the last few years, uh, just just adjusting to it. Um, so I kind of walk between both worlds. I've gotten a little more comfortable with that one, but now they're like, okay, go back out and get used to that one again. So. <laughs> yeah, same with us. You know, right now I'm kind of 
forcing myself. I have a schedule. From that part, from that hour to that hour, I am I'm there, and from that hour to that hour, I go way down, three steps down, and balance myself. You know, it's all about balance. You know, we are supposed to grab fourth and third dimension and and connect them. We are in yeah, yeah, we're merging. Yeah. So yeah. my uh, my experiences are uh, taught like the most uh, highlighted one. Uh, one day I was 16 or 15 years old. I remember the place. I was walking down the hill in Moscow and looking at the stars. And I decided I am from Pleiades. It was just you know something I chose. It was a choice. It's it my favorite the stars. It's been my favorite in the stars system. I was, I'm from Pleiades. That's that's my you know my constellation. And now they say I have a certain percent of Pleiadian DNA, and they consider me. Uh, one of them. Uh, another thing was, I was in math school at that time, and teachers and students knew I can uh, just intuit the answer to, to really complex math, math problems, especially the geometrical math problems. Uh, you know, everybody gets a task, and there were like a couple students in my class, me and some one one or two more, which you know we just get the answer, and then we kind of try to figure out how to explain other things. How we got to that answer, but the answer comes first, and I know I have to just get in a special state of mind, and I, I just included it. That was, uh, I remember 1997, I guess. I remember speaking to a group of people in our lab, and uh, they were talking about aliens. And my, I just came to America, so my English was, I couldn't understand things. It was about Cuban aliens. Cuban immigrants, alien immigrants, but you know, I didn't understand it, so I said, I don't believe in aliens, and you know, that's how I remember. It was a mistake, but I remember at that point, I didn't believe the aliens are here. I thought it's all nonsense, and what brought me uh, back to in peace with that was was healing practices. I was always very sensitive to energies. Uh, when there are weather changes, I knew that there. Uh, Storm, uh, thunderstorm is coming minutes before that. I, I'm really like really strongly feeling that. And what people are in the room, I know that energies are not right. I would, you know, I would go somewhere, bring one more person just to balance the energies. In there. <laughs> and you know, healing again. I mean, uh, when in a, you know, a scientist or a student, you have to be in the classroom with a lot of people. And I map the places in the classroom where I feel most comfortable, mostly. Left on the on left, back left, and you know, if I go to the concert or anyway, I would die if I see on the first row, especially in the middle. It would kill me. Other people they don't really care. I it would kill me sitting there. I feel pain in myself. I have to map it, you know, and mostly at my favorite place in the door in the door opening. If I I'm if I'm saturated, I step really loud. If I'm you know back to normal, I come in. But energies, you know, energies are very important. So when it came to healing, it's very natural. I feel energies are sand, sand energy. So Reiki is the key for me. So Reiki was the the opening. Uh, the book, the book, you know, books are everything. Uh, the field, oops, yeah, the field by Lean McTaggart, a British writer, journalist. The field. Uh, it was groundbreaking. It explained. It didn't say aliens ever, but it brought you dimensionally right there. So after the, you you realize that you know the universe is built this way, there is no way back. And the next question was, I finished the book. Next, how about check out the aliens? And you open YouTube and and you can step back. I mean, crop circles appeared like now uh, crop circles appear every other day maybe, and people in UK go and visit them. I mean. I noticed that. Is it, do you think, um, just like a quick aside, yeah. what's, your, what's your thought on crop circles? Yeah, we ask them. Yeah. And they say, you know, it's just one of those things like channelings. It is a tool which brings awareness up, awareness. It's a miracle, but and a miracle which is easy to dismiss. Right, right. So it's they're permitted to do, yeah. to do crop circles as an art form, as messages, cool. cryptic. And you also, these messages, and if you read them, some of them have text. They have errors. Mm -hmm. So it's easy to dismiss it because it has an error. 
it gives you a message, but it also gives you an error and a way, a way to dismiss. So you have to make a choice. Get it out. You, you know, it's a tool. Yeah. It's a tool, and, and you make a choice. A tool mm -hmm. to make a choice. Mm -hmm. and, and they say some of them are pretty nasty, and they are done by negative aliens. And they say, you know, something negative. Humanity, you got to go. Something Is like that. Is it like graffiti? <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's graffiti. Alien graffiti. Yeah. Cross but uh, some of them are also. Uh, make tone sounds. If you would put them into the computer, it would come out as a tone. Uh -huh. So, And they put all these tones together, and they were thinking that that was uh, something very significant because of uh, we react to different vibrations and tones in our body. So they think right. there's a message within that, but they don't know what it is. So, But um, crop circles are amazing to me. I love them. I think they're beautiful. But I, I think they're also uh, very important. I mean, people stu are studying them. The, uh, the well, they're people just have another their island, lives to, another, yeah. yeah. People were devoting their lives to figuring them out. Because they're not going away. And yeah, I thought, forbidden. you know, sometimes you wonder, like, am I just, because I'm more aware of this, am I just seeing it more? But mm -hmm. it did seem like there has been a significant increase in cross circles. Mm -hmm. Check out, there is a website, Crop Circle Connector, I believe it's called. I mean, there is the best website, it's easy to find, it's on the top of Google search. Crop Circle Connector. Crop Circle Connector. Connector. Yeah, and they catalog every circle, and to every circle they first do shots, then they do videos, and then they do aerial shots, then they do geographic, uh, geometric deciphering, and then there is a discussion, and people bring amazing deciphering of the circle. Some of them can be deciphered. So. It's, it's an amazing community. It's mostly it's in UK, but it's around the world, Australia, Canada, United States. Unfortunately, it's only in the, when, when the grass is there, when the right. crops are there. In the winter, there are a few snow circles, but they're not as sophisticated. It's not how they like their living plants better. Mm -hmm. Well, I can, it well, connects the living energy to living energy. Mm -hmm. and, and also, it's kind maybe of, they melt snow really quickly. It's like also it. reminds an acupuncture oh, yeah. for Earth. They, they also use it to heal our our oh, shock. Right, like aerating. Yeah. Yeah, they, mm -hmm. they use, it's also a healing tool. Everything. Yes. This yes. is an interview about everything. <laughs> Jen, questions? What are you over there? We have about half an hour left, so pick the most important ones. Um, jeez. <laughs> um, so how long have you guys have had your site up, um, been putting this information out, and what's the feedback? Three months ago, October 8th, went online. And we jo like about 100 people joined us about in about a week. Because it was, I invited people to apply to go up there, and there are a few Ning sites, N-I-N-G sites, like uh, the most, uh, Ashtar Command is the most populated, 15,000 light workers. And they just applied. Awesome. Okay. Uh, and what can a person do to facilitate their own contact experiences? Is there anything aside from applying that you would recommend? Uh, could you say that again? But how does this person facilitate their experiences? Um, they want to, maybe they're too shy to hook up or yeah. and they're having it and they don't understand what's going on or they just want to start. Yes. Uh, a lot of people find us by accident on purpose from being led there by somebody else uh, because they're they're confused. They're, some of them spoke a language at one time. You know, they have a, a galactic language. They feel ostracized. They feel like they don't belong to society. They have a hard time connecting to society. They <clears throat> come here and find friends and happiness and acceptance and that they're not crazy pretty much all right so uh, mm -hmm. success is the key word success and health uh, you in, in intention. Uh, intention success health intention uh, the need to become more spiritual doesn't negate the need for success they want you to be successful uh, the definition of success changes but success is important you have to be a successful person, successful life. Your soul has to get as deep as it can reach an experience as possible. So you come here as a soul to get experience. So basically what you're saying, it's not like I have a lot of money or I have a lot of things. It's successful and that you're balanced. You're working constantly at balancing so you're not always depressed. You're not always 
you kind of have a better self awareness. Is that what you mean by success? Like you have, or not better, but just the self awareness. You define what is most successful life for you. Okay, it's a so choice. successful life. Uh, you. If you identify yourself with your soul, you are your soul, then what would be your soul wanting here in this experience? What okay. is your goal at this day or this week? How you can be most excited, most creative? Oh, hang on. You got Misty. Speak up, Misty. Yes. Based on that, um, what I'm hearing is it's really going towards uh, the process of self-actualization. Yes. Uh, while incarnated in the human body. Let me yes. let me just repeat that yeah, because people. So this is Misty Gersley on speakerphone. Um, and so what she's saying is that it's really about self-actualization. Yes. Um, say that again. Self-actualization, realization. Realization of the Manifestation. self. Manifestation. Yes. Uh, so you're not. So just like you were saying too, embracing your soul. You yeah. Know, and what's your soul purpose and working with it? John Lennon says, "Be yourself." I mean, your most important task is to be yourself. But you know, if you are sick, poor, and you can't even go out of the house because it will cost you gas and stuff, you deprive yourself of experiences. It is only so that much you can do being locked from other people. Going out there and changing the world. Getting a job and being involved in changing the whole globe might be the best experience for you. I mean, it's your choice. Some people get the best experience in their oh, garden, yes. but you know, it's your it's choice again. Guys. But yeah. you know, how do you facilitate communicating the daily? Many people come to us because they want to leave the material world and they want to become spiritual and forget about material. World. But you know, if your soul chose to be here to transform the world. Leaving the world is not the way to transform. It. Right, and and we all struggle, I think, too, with that. That um, because we have no access, or what we don't have really good access to our soul, to our soul purpose. Most of us just wake up in hell, and you work from there, or if you wake up and you have this amazing spiritual experience that shows you glimpses of what reality is, and not what you've been taught. Right. Yeah, yeah. I have to say that in my personal sessions with people, when we, when the aliens talk to an individual, they they know that person. They teach and know that person. They tell them all about themselves, so they know that they know them. And then they give them something special. They give them something. Uh, yesterday, uh, one of the ladies had a 17-year-old daughter that died of cancer. And that daughter, Kerr, came and said, she can't talk to you personally, but I can give you the message that she think. And it, it was devastatingly beautiful and so accurate. Even the language used in the message was the words that her daughter would have used. So it's, it's and it changed her right there. Just changed it her. Connect, there was enough. There was enough there that, because... The one thing she said to her was, Mommy, why do you feel guilty? You shouldn't feel guilty. You didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. And she said, I can't believe she said that because that was what she needed to hear. She really needed to hear that. And it came right through. Yeah, it came right through. Because who would think that if somebody died of cancer, somebody would feel guilty about it? Just, but... Humans, we yeah. too. <laughs> we take so, so much So, but on. anyway, the... The aliens facilitate human growth one by one and in groups. So. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay. I mean, you can invite them, but then it's up to them to come to you. Right. But they come as much as they can, and they help as deeply as they can, really. They, they want to bring the spirit up. They want to heal the body because they understand the importance of it. And then enriching the human experience. Oh, yes, definitely. Right. We had one uh, wonderful young man, uh, we still have them, uh, who really, really, really wanted everything. He wanted to be taken, he wanted to participate, he wanted to uh, channel, and the desire was so strong. I, I would say no, and you know. I'm sorry I'm busy, but he would knock on the door very positively, very positively. Hey, 
I got that progress today, and I had that experience today, and I, someday it helped me. He's now speaking galactic languages and channeling, and it took him half a year to get through this path. But uh, the one thing they said: first, you have to keep your job, mm -hmm. and second, already uh, you're already old enough. You have to get sex before you <laughs> progress because you're behind in your human physical. Well, and connecting. That's you know we. That's exactly. As, this person, I know who you're talking about. This person was fourth dimensional in nature and could not relate to third dimension. Yeah. And that was one of the ways they told this person to relate to third. Yeah, dimension. to ground yourself. To yeah, having sex to ground yourself. How about <laughs> 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 this is all I can get. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but intention is everything, and communicating and education. Yeah, like when thing. you read books, yeah, you watch that. YouTube. I mean, some of them read, some of them, some of you watch YouTube's. Watch YouTube's. Do your research, and don't the key key to success. Don't watch from the beginning YouTube to the end of YouTube. Browse, skip, skip our the most interesting place, and That's then right. you can find what resonates with you because you know some people just start from the beginning and get bored and go away. Uh, do your homework, do your research, find what is really for you, and watch there from the beginning to the end, digest and watch again until it, you transform. You have to change yourself. To You do the step, they make a step. You do the step, they make a step. Yes, and I had people say, I've watched every single one of your videos, and I'm going, oh my gosh, that'd be like sitting in front of YouTube for a month. Yeah, so, <laughs> so watch every one of our videos, and you will be taken. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Don't send money. Watch TV. Right. Oh. Right. <laughs> Move forward. Did they say don't send money? He he does that. Don't <laughs> send money. Yes. Yeah. yeah. yeah Donate button on our right. website. Yes. We, are we, still we need your help. Working in their financial. Yes, we are. I mean, if you have money to spare, really, it is your job to share this with is the like world. This is the PBS portion. <laughs> this is the donation information yes. portion of our. But <laughs> this is the love portion. This right. is the. The love portion, where if you have a lot of money to give, there we're here needy. And you just here don't we know are. where to give it. He, we're the Human needy. Here, here, guys. Yes. yes. About all of us here. Yes. <laughs> we're. This is how I make my living. So yeah. <laughs> so success, pretty much defined by self-actualizing. Health, I think it's kind of self-explanatory. Like because mm -hmm. it kind of goes with number one. Like. You know, yeah, your chakras have to be balanced. Taking if care of you yourself. are disbalanced, you have lots right. of blockages. Uh, for the mention, knowledge does, doesn't flow through you. First thing they do to you, they bounce your chakras. They, you know, you come to the call and they do Reiki on you until you can raise your vibration because you can, your body can hold only that much of spirit. Their body can hold tons more of spirit right. of, the, of, of their own spirit. So to raise your vibration, you have to feed that energy. It has to be within you. Mm -hmm. And it will just, you know, it will burn your uh, circuits if if you are not ready. So, Correct. so you know, all we do now is to go up, go down, and kind of feel fit more of our energy. We we can, you know. They um, when when they get up there and do the reiki on you, they also start with a I. Uh, uh, they lead a meditation at the beginning of everything that they do. So. Uh, Brian is there, but. Um, yeah, uh, meditation is one of the keys. So intention and meditation are the tools. So how do you facilitate communicating daily? Meditation? Meditation. Intention, meditation. Just yeah. Intend uh, your meditation. My, my favorite word is invite. When I start my meditation, I say, today I invite my spirit guides or my higher self. And God. you say it out loud. Say it out loud. Don't just say it in here. Say it out loud. You want everybody to hear. Go ahead. Or at least out loud in your brain. I mean, one of the misconceptions is that they can read your mind, and they say, unfortunately, it, it's so messy. We even if we read the words, we don't understand them. It's uh, so. If you want to communicate to us telepathically, say it a sequence and focus on what you're saying. You, you have to almost say it out loud in your mind. Then they can read it way better. Because uh, most of us have so many conflicting pitches at the same time, and we don't finish our sentences in our mind. It's unreadable to them. Which makes sense, because a lot of people, when they go to psychics or mediums, they say,
say, you know, they'll make those silly derogatory comments like, didn't you see me coming? What are the lotto numbers? Can't you read my mind? And no, guys, don't. We can pick up on energy, right? And sometimes we can get phrases and stuff, but this is a crazy place up in here. And just to go in and just see the one thing that you're thinking of when you're thinking of millions of things simultaneously, good luck. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't work. It's not that easy. And also, here is uh, the importance of things. Like, it has to be really important and really beneficial. They have the block. If it's not the benefit of the person, they wouldn't, they wouldn't right. be able to answer. So they only can do things when it is beneficial for you, for your spiritual growth, for your progression, for your experience. Mm -hmm. So when it is really important, the message comes through. When it's not really important for you, if you just... Uh, how about we drink beer? Mm, it would be nice to see a salsa, but you know why would you need it? Right. 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 Exactly. It's not gonna benefit. Right. I like that. If it's not benefit. But if you really, really want it, you will, will get it. Yes. So be careful. And it's your you choice. You're basically choosing what's Bashar asks. What's your highest excitement at this moment? Mm -hmm. And highest meaning, mm, best experience for your soul, I guess, for your growth. You have a path. What is the next step on your path? Mm -hmm. Um, what else? What else do we have, John? Um, hey, Brad, for joining. Hey, Max. Hey, Jim. Who's the two lovely ladies? Jamie is here beside me. Hello, and Jamie. On the, uh, Hello, on the monitor. And okay. Miss is on the speakerphone. The speakerphone. Say hi, Misty. Hi, Misty. Hi, Misty. Hi, Misty. Hey, Misty. I can't hear, but. <laughs> oh, much, much love and light to all of you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. We. Give the microphone again to Jen with the questions. Um, okay, so this one is about, I, I know you guys mentioned the reptilians earlier, and I guess from the stereotype that they get just kind of out there is that they are uh, maybe more of a negative force, but it seems like they are integrating in. Was there something that made that switch, or can you kind of explain? Um, is that or just a rumor, or how does that play out? Well, getting to know the reptilians was a little more difficult, but I found that they're people, the good reptilians are people of honor and love, and, well, they're strong. They like strength a lot. That is, strength is like almost like their love. They love strength, and strength is love, and, and when, they're, when they're dealing with each other, they deal with each other strongly, and they... And if you're a weak person, they won't pay attention to you because uh, that's just, you have to be, you know, strong. You have to stand up for what you believe. You have to have... It's their passion. Yeah, and their passion is honor and strength and actually goodness and light. That's for the good ones. And they're actually very, they have a good sense of humor. And they they're, they remind me of, like, Germans along... The, <laughs> Why Germans? <laughs> because they were pretty ruthless in their day, you know. Oh, the, German during the war. Yes, so it was like... Rrr. Oh, they but, remind us any warriors. Yeah, they were, they were warrior. warriors. But yet, you know, they can come and have wonderful... If you listen to Treb, that's uh, you know, by Rob Goff here, he's like a lovely European gentleman. I mean, he's got the language and the words and the wisdom and the kindness and you know he's just one and he's not weak but he tells it like it is it's it's his, his strength to be forthright so go on YouTube search for Treb T-R-E-B channeling you'll yeah, get it yeah uh, it's, it's quite interesting and he's a reptilian um, hybrid hybrid right benevolent yep yeah. and so um, what can you add to that? Oh, tongues. Uh, yeah. Where I, we so, yeah. so uh, from bigger perspective, uh, beyond dimensions, beyond our galaxy, first we're insectoids everywhere. Uh, insectoid humanoids, they were like human bipedal insectoids. They, it's not only on Earth insectoids come from. Then, then it was reptilians everywhere. And then, in our galaxy, the human form, the first humans came from outside of the galaxy. They, I don't know who delivered them, gods, but they came physically higher dimensional, but they were first humans, and they were Lyrans. Lyrans, feline yeah. humanoids, very enlightened, very highly spiritual, 
almost non-material, but they were first ones. And they lived happily until reptilians destroyed their home planet. And it was a reptilian, oh, sorry, Liron diaspora. Liron spread over the galaxy. And from them uh, emerged, evolved all the other humanoids in the galaxy. So it's that conflict between humans and reptilians is much more ancient than Earth is. On Earth, it's the same thing. It was dinosaurs, and then we came, and they went extinct. Mm -hmm. And we still have, in other layers of dimensions, other Earths, there is lots of reptilians and all sorts of them. Yes. And they are part of us in many ways, in spiritual way and in genetic. We are, we are hybrid mix. We have Earth primates as our base. They are, we are Earthans. We are coming from Earth. We have over 90% gene similarity to, to all animals on Earth, including mammals and even lizards. We are very close. We have similar bone structure to lizards. It's only the you know, live birth and milk glands which makes us, make us different. Otherwise, we are still lizards. Right. That's, you know, biologically, we are lizards very close to them. But plus, we have infusions of Pleiadians, Lyrans, Arcturians, I'm not sure about Arcturians. Grays, for sure, yeah, yeah, Grays are, uh, am I missing someone? Syrians. Syrians, thank you. Uh, uh, Elohim, mm -hmm. Anunnaki, I'm missing still one, but, but you know. The Nords. Yes, the Nords, yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. Orion, Nords, Nordics, yes. yes. That's Mind about blown, just yes. so you guys know, <laughs> mind blown. Okay. What's that mind? Mind blown. My mind is blown. <laughs> blown. Yes. So we're really, I mean, this is going back to our beginnings. Like right. this, we have been a part of a galactic, intergalactic right. atmosphere since our inception, and here we are, like spilling on your couch talking about it. Right. <laughs> so, so yeah. So it's a, you know, biologically, it's a question: is it evolution or creation? We are evolving from. <laughs> Uh, prehistoric humans, right, from from the uh, apes, whatever, mm -hmm. uh, primates, but uh, the aliens came, refugees from different worlds, and came and settled, and then they realized they can't, their body is not suited for Earth, so they had to adjust, and the way, best way to adjust is to hybridize, in most cases it wasn't love, family relationship, it was just in vitro, in vitro, they mix their genome with our genome, but after that, they can incarnate in our bodies. That's the key. Okay, so this is really important because I've met a lot of people out there who talk about hybridization, who feel like there's uh, people identify with being a star seed or feeling, or mm -hmm. even having um, past life regressions or life between life hypno regressions find that they are not human origin, that they yes. are of alien origin. And so so now we have like the biological need to do that where um, we have worked, people have worked, aliens have worked to create suitable vessels for that to happen. Yes. So perfect. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> and the news for you, almost everyone or everyone on Earth had past lives as aliens. Yes. I, I, they are yeah. so ancient, we came here down here, because mo most of the aliens are higher dimensional, we came down here, dimensionally down, to experience that human uh, human reality, uh, Earth reality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, some of those are... With matter. When you combine spirit with matter, it, I mean, what does it start? It starts from nothing, right? So the evolution of how our bodies have formed. For right. me, the aliens are the projected evolution of what we would become this type of thing. But what would you consider a bad reptilian? Is that a metaphor for devilish deeds? Or, I mean, what is a bad reptilian? Which ones do they decide to, to breed or not to breed? What is the different... There, there are some species of reptilian that want to control the earth and do have control of parts of the earth. And there are those that want... Uh, it for different reasons actually. There are the mineral deposits, the the fact that their planet is uninhabitable anymore. There's so many different things that have come up to light, which are true, I don't know. Uh, but 
what is certainly true is they do have control of some of the political leaders on this planet. And if you look at those political leaders in their face, there's no emotion anymore, no uh, anything in the eyes. They're they're pretty much uh, flat affect almost. Yes, yeah. very very yeah. flat affect. And I, I made a, I made a comment to Misty the other day that Obama seems to have been picking up a uh, George Bush accent lately. Does anybody know? <laughs> <laughs> like where did that come from? I don't know. <laughs> the hand up his butt. <laughs> so yeah. that George Bush residue. <laughs> so yeah, it's possible. I don't know. Yeah, uh, maybe they just switched the their the device which programs him and uh, and uh, you know they you know the, the part of the code they borrowed from George, George Bush's device. Right, right ago. <laughs> what, what I'm saying. Yeah. The definition. <laughs> the definition. Sorry, definition of the uh, bed is is basically bed. In which, what what is bad for us may be good for them, right? Uh, exactly. So they have ulterior mode. So um, ulterior yeah. de deception. And they're not working with. It sounds like they don't work with our free will. Like they're just like I'm the bad gonna, ones. They, the ones that don't. They at first uh, let you believe that they are working with your free will, but then they take it over. Okay, so, so they're like, we're minorities, and they're prejudiced against humans or. Yeah. Let's say we know very little about bad reptilians. Okay. We yeah, don't true. communicate to them. Well, yeah, right. You're not. We are not interested even in researching them. It's like what you focus on defines your reality. We love Yael. We love Pleiadians. We love Arcturians. And when the friendly reptilians came, they were welcome because they're part of the same alliance. And we just try to find out what they are, who they are, what are their good and bad things, can you trust them? And one thing I can say, even the good reptilians, they are very tricky in terms of getting consent. They cannot, they are not permitted to do things without consent, but they would go, go in extremes of uh, you know, how much you can bend the reality and truth to get the consent. But you know, there was a, a, an example, uh, bad reptilians, yes, one, one example. Our friend, member of our site, to Babu, it's all on record. So, at some point, uh, they came to him, and he's so open, so loving. He get, gave a consent. He spoke out loud when he listened to coast to coast radio that they said, you know, bad reptilians want to take uh, some of the hybrids uh, to their whatever uh, station, and he said, I would agree to that. So they hybridized him, took his son, the only son of his has, I mean hybrid son, not not the under earth. And he became a slave on bad reptilian space station somewhere in their solar system. And because of the father's consent, uh, he cannot get it back. He says, give it back, I don't want it. I don't want him to be a slave or whatever, a prisoner. And the bad reptilians cannot do anything. I mean they, they have his consent. So even the good reptilians also, they wanted Jim's consent to get infusion on um, reptilian DNA, and he gave it. But according to the rules, he could stop at any point, so he stopped at some point when he felt that he becomes uh, angry. Well, I had, I had started it, and then all of a sudden, I would be angry and anxious and didn't feel good. So I told him to stop it, and they said that they stopped it at 0.7%. I only had 0.7 percent, and it was already yeah. feeling it already. Yeah. And um, I said, "No, nah, that's not for me." But they can't take it out. But the thing is, while they were putting it in, that's what I was feeling. I don't feel anything now. I think 0.7 percent is pretty low. So, uh, but it did affect me. So, so I said, "No." As more, you mentioned no that. Uh, so there are multiple hybridization programs. One of them is hybridization for future children, hybrid children to be living up there. People can volunteer through our website. Sign up to go is one at gmail.com is one of the ways. Just send an email, and they will consider. You can invite uh, any hybridization, or you can specifically say, I want to hybridize with Pleiadians, Lyrons, Arcturians, Yael, and Reptilians. Uh, they also invite the requests, applications for infusion of alien DNA in adults. It's a completely different thing. Basically, they they transform your DNA and put inside of the DNA, mostly in the brain. They put some of their 
sequences and that is done to upgrade you, basically. It's a DNA upgrade. You become more four-dimensional. You get more telepathic abilities, psychic abilities. Uh, they try to make it, you more healthy, but uh, it's an experiment. They don't have much experience, so they don't really, they can't guarantee it. But they can stop. It goes in small parts, so you can stop at any point. But, you know, people have gone through that, and uh, some, of the, some of our volunteers had experiences that they felt the upgrade uh, it's gentle but it's it's uh, something it's new yeah it's definitely new in the system all right so reptilians coming back you know um good reptilians bad reptilians it's, uh, we don't know what their what their agenda is we are trying to find out on our side we have interviews with about maybe 10 reptilians some of them are more good than others uh, our members we often find that they have uh, some of them have been in past lives reptilian officers, and then reptilians are pretty military, so their structure is very militaristic. So we have been fighting for reptilians in past lives, spiritual relation. Uh, not me, but many, uh, some of our friends. You know, very gentle guys, but uh, past life connection. You know, it, it is imprinted in your chakras and other parts of the spirit. Uh, some have reptilian DNA infusion. Uh, but there are. Ancient reptilian DNA, everyone has ancient, but there are the recent reptilian infusions, like in conception of you or maybe in a few generations ago. So they are more related, and reptilians have more ways to control them transdimensionally and more ways to monitor them. Mm -hmm. So one of the reasons they, you know, that's how they influence you know, reptilian bloodlines, they, they can control them better. So it sounds like reptilians are a serious presence on this planet. Period. Uh, yeah, that's what they say, yeah. and our friends confirm that. They are present, and so. they say they are, you know, they are more ancient here than we are guests. So they are, that's their planet. So maybe that's kind of why they feel like they can, like John was saying, like they can be a little prejudiced towards humans because this is kind of like where they started. They yeah. started, like they started colonizing. Before us. True. Yes. Uh, I, I believe it's more about you're right. It's it's more about the integration about human uh, humanity. Yes, and the, the reptilians are here. They've been here a lot longer than us, but they're is to sh they're learning from us so much. All these species in the, in this what you call the galactic, they're learning from what it is to be human. The degree of love that we have on this, the the degree of hatred that we can exhibit, they're learning so much from us. And the reptilian is an integration, not something to be feared, because they're showing different aspects of ourselves, a reflection. That is why why so many people fear them? Good question. I think it's more about an integration of love. Because they're looking at us to say, ah, look at all the different types of, um, I'm going to say different types of humans, but different races that we have on here, you know? And they said, well, they can't even get along with their own races. You know, we're having wars over crazy things, mm -hmm. stupid things, mm -hmm. over food, over oil, over water. I mean, over religion. These yeah. wars are pointless now. We don't. We have. It's just we need to find out new solutions of distribu distributions of wealth. Yeah. See, this that's the thing. Make it more fair and balanced for everyone. Yeah. So these wars. This is what they're looking at. So for them to come down more, what you call first contact, it's going to happen, but they're not going to have a full-scale landing until we're getting more closer on how we can learn from each other and integrate that, integrate the shadow side of ourselves, the dark sides, what we call the dark sides of ourselves. That has to be established for them to really be able to come down in a, loving, a more loving planet. That's what they're looking at. Thank you, Brian. Great point. Integration, Excellent yes. Uh, Thank I will, you. I will highlight two Thank dimensions, two things here. One is personal. We are ascending personally and collectively, and making peace with our reptilian fa facet, our reptilian side is important for, for the whole as ascension. And second is uh, more like political, social, economic. Our galactic friends, the AEL, who are mostly committed to help us ascend, just realized ascension requires our political reform. And 
when it comes to politics and economy, they are at loss. They just don't get it. They don't understand. Uh, they just you know so confused. How can we function this way? Uh, initially, they thought we're all crazy. They're all <laughs> suicidal. But now they realize there are some among us which are sort of light workers, not as suicidal as others, right? But you know, altogether, we are collectively on a, on a suicidal path, and. Uh, they don't understand our politicians how they can be so selfish and suicidal as well, right? So, and then they realized when reptilians came and said, we are in control of main financial and political things, and we are willing to be part of the same alliance to help you help humanity to ascend. It took them half a year to accept this help, but basically they are on trial now, positive reptilians, friendly reptilians. But you know they're experts in uh, controlling human leaders and talking to them and being listened by them. So our leaders cannot, you know, ignore your yelling pleadings, but listen to reptilians, especially the ones with sharp uh, teeth, right? <laughs> so, uh, so, so that is a big factor in our ascension. You know, we have now reptilians mediating the ascension and. They are also kind of stuck in their ascension development. Some of them are third dimensional, most of them are four dimensional, but their goal is to ascend to the fifth, and because of their military, uh, you know, when, it's, when I ask reptilians, what makes you proud? One of the first answers I got, that we survived. And for me it was, you know, that's what makes your race proud, that you survived, you know, there is nothing better. But basically, there's warriors who fight to, to, to survive. That survival is the key word in their thinking. So for them, uh, if we make it, well, they also make it, right? <laughs> this, right? Max, this is what I find so interesting about the reptilian races, is that when they choose a human to use our DNA to help their species, that tells you something about us. Yes. Right. Oh yes, that we are so important to them, right. and that's amazing. That that tell I mean, why would a reptilian need our DNA, our genetics? It, it, in many There's something cases, in there, or any yeah, of. Them. I feel a bit that they're a little jealous of us, a little bit, that we can be a little bit more less brittle, a little less. Not so. Oh, our yeah, range of uh, they, they our have range of is so powerful that they are blown away by it. The it degree another, of emotion on this planet is amazing. Yes. There is another integration idea. Uh, the Earth human is an integration point for many galactic races. Right. We combine reptilian with Arcturian with Lyran with Pleiadian with Syrian, right? So when you make it, it kind of makes more peace within the galaxy. If we make it, yes. But the, yes, we will make we're it. We're making yeah. it, guys. Yeah, yes, make it. right there. You just said it, and that is perfect, Max. It's right. It's about the integration of the the human That's becoming right. more of the galactic. And you're right, and vice versa. Exactly. Because without us, a lot, like you said, a lot of the species out there doesn't have that range of emotion as a human. So they are taking our DNA to balance out theirs and to integrate, and they need that. I think Misty has a are you still there? Are you still there? Yes, I am. Did, did, you, you, did you want to say something? Um, I, I just really wanted to touch on the fact um, that with self-actualization and, and things along those natures and the things that you were talking about, the Reiki and the alien influence that's um, <laughs> coming upon us to try to unlock our to the potential as well as integrate our human, the power of the human emotion, power of the, the intellect of our emotional state, which um, is really fascinating to me. I really enjoy that you're touching upon this, uh, this topic. And I, I think that the disconnect with humans sometimes can be the overwhelming uh, nature of our emotional state. So I'm just wondering how uh, you feel that the reptilians and different uh, alien races are hoping to integrate our emotional states 
yeah. to heighten the whole elastic, the universal life force. I think it's it's really connected. Let's and stop, I was let's, if you could that with me. Let's stop there so we can repeat that question. So, be, so the main focus of that question is um, how what their expectation is of us. Or uh, it was about integration of right. humanity into a galactic arena to raise the vibrations of and our galactic. Her, her question was, "How are we going to do that?" Yeah. Okay. So how um, do we do the, that? The the big answer is telepathy, because um, once you can, once a species has telepathy, they can become more communal. They can become more. Because you can't hide with telepathy. You can't. You really can hide, hide some things, but, but not what's on the surface. You're right. Yeah. Right. You but a little... the thing is, what it makes you wonder what they keep on the surface now. But uh, the thing is, <laughs> when telepathy is realized by humanity, we are so diverse as individuals. It will bring us together in a closer thought pattern. That is the answer to. How, how we're going to do it. How that's going to happen is because you cannot help, but if you're in a telepathic community, know the feelings of all those people around you and be actually concerned because you know that if someone's not feeling well, you're going to have the effect of that as well. And that's the empathic part of us. So what I'm hearing is, is just uh, because that was my big question is how do we negotiate our emotional states as human beings and so telepathy is really that aspect that we are communally missing in order to integrate with each other. Yes, uh, yes let, let, me, let me address this. So uh, the key here of your question is emotions. Disconnect from emotion, disconnect within yourself, disconnect from other people and how they are helping how we are going to make it. Uh, I will give you a secret. A secret, yes. Uh, it's sort of on the surface, but uh, you know that that is um, combine the answer with the question. So, so the the answer is staying positive no matter what. That's what how they are helping us. That the message we are getting now consistently. Stay positive in the worst situations where you feel that the whole whether existence of yours or others is in crisis and you don't know the way out, look at the positive side. Look at that as a challenge. Look at that as experience. It's still, you know, if you couldn't make it, you wouldn't be given that challenge. They give you the challenge. They, higher dimensional, uh, the gods give you the challenge because you can, ma you can make it, right? So the secret is staying Positive, no matter what. That's you know the universal answer to all troubles and disconnections. The disconnections which we experience are here by design. You know, accept it as a lesson. It is by design, and from day to day, someday you get perfect unity, and the next day you get surprising disconnections. I'm now looking like as a researcher, I'm surprised how. On some days, people in front of me communicate, one says one thing, and how that is converted to completely opposite in whoever is listen, listens, it, it's a miracle. You know, every day I experience that miracle, especially the last couple of weeks. One person says very clear thing, and second person gets it all upside down, all right to left, inside out. And I think it's by design. I think it's, they call it creative conflict, the gods that <laughs> Creative conflict. They give you a certain percent of mismatch, mess. Even in channelings, we get, you know, I ask them to count from 1 to 20 in their language, and they happily count. And next time, I try to do the same and they count different numbers. And they say, no, no, we counted right, but on the record, it got Messed, messed up, and that is there through by the design. Translate. Yeah, through the intentional mistakes are introduced by whoever designs our mind matrix. I mean, it's one of the laws. You cannot get a miracle reproducible. You can get it once, but next time it will be a little different. Different. So, with all these channel challenges, stay positive. And now, how do you solve the disconnection problem? 
by connection. Connect to your emotions. Yes. Be true to yourself. And connect to people. Join light work. Choose, you have a choice who to join. On our side, there are wonderful people. Other sides are wonderful people. And how do you connect to them? You get their phone numbers. You talk to them. Get to Skype. Talk to them. What you do right now, Brian, thank you for integrating everybody. Connect to them in person. Pick and choose and connect. You know, build a network in the walls. Yes. Build your connections with people of like mind. Find that which you attracts you to them. You know, yeah. it can be the job situation. It can be just talking about your struggles in life. I mean, that's that's the biggest thing is what we have in common. Not, it's it's not so much look at the differences. Yeah, it's really what we have in common. And getting into our vulnerability. I See, that, love that's that. Where, that is where our power truly lies is on our vulnerability. Because if we can, even in spite of fear, if we can move past that, and you know what I mean, and just just embrace it and say, what is there really to be afraid of, in that moment, you know, and just and just and, and look at just look at the whole perspective without judgment. That's the biggest thing on the planet: oh, the shame, yeah. the guilt, what we've been There's raised, our belief systems. We got to move past that. Yeah, and I find myself because I um, I do a little, I, one of my next projects is um, figuring out how to get those subconscious judging judgmental value judgment responses to be more conscious so I can make a choice not to not to go that route. Like, you know, the more you become self aware, the more you see so much of your judgment, it's it's just there. It's ingrained and it's automatic. It's like breathing. Yes. And, it's it's yeah. almost like we have to start slow. So maybe five, right. ten minutes out of the day, just see where you're at. Self reflection. Look where you are. See what triggers you. Look for the triggers. If something stops in that moment, catch yourself from saying something to somebody that you might not usually say. So right. stopping yourself and being in that moment and, and wondering, just be there and say to yourself, all is well. I'm okay. And But the things that come up, the things that push your collective buttons, the things that push your buttons, what is it about that? What causes that? And just observe it and find out. Now, what it, what the reaction is? It's it's your belief system. Change your belief systems, and that it, that's, that's it's easier said than done. But just find out why does that not cause pain? What does that cause grief? Get to the root of the situation. And you should be able to find something in common with everyone on Earth. Yes, at least one thing. And see the God with them on them. one thing. And that will bring about the beginning of that community. Yeah. It's the spirit. We all share one, a spirit. We have that commonality. Look for the commonality in people, not yeah. so much the differences. Yesterday, uh, we were in a strange community with like there were different cultures, and we wanted to play charades game where you show the word or phrase. And usually it's so much fun and easy to come up with a phrase, but I realized no one in the group has a common phrase that they remember. Even common word, it's really hard to find because they are from this culture, they are from this culture. Okay. Even common words, I like, and I realized, you know, the only common words we, we share is food. <laughs> so, you know, the words were like ketchup and ice cream, but, you know, <laughs> but, you know it comes, you know, finding the common ground is like ketchup. Yeah. Yeah. The one thing we all share, yeah, the one thing we do all share is love. Yeah. Right. The one thing that always is constant. And music. And music. Yes. Music. And the arts. Yes. yes. So beautiful. It's, it's uh, you know, you can get to the people through music. Some people don't like music, but most, I'd say 99% of the people on the earth like music. So it's one area where you can connect with them. And it's, it's something, something we also fall into the habit of is, is not, is, is trying to overanalyze things and so we're always diving into our mind and avoiding kind of the, the leaves and all the stuff that gathers on the surface we kind of push it away to dive down and we're not allowing what's on the surface to just unfold when you say sit down and do some writing we think over we think be hard on ourselves oh it has to be really good it has to be really deep no we need to get rid of what's on the surface in order for that to be able to come up so we need to address the tedious things, the things we might think are, oh, that's that's 
rubbish or, you know, I, should, I shouldn't waste my time, I'm not worthy of that, you know, these little things that we think. Um, and in working with the body, that's where we can, we can look at those things that we want to avoid in our mind because they're right there in our, in our body. If we're, if we're straining it and resisting against something and we feel it in our muscles, like, oh, well, all of these patterns come from our psychological, our psychological habits. Um, yeah. They create how our body reacts. It's in our nervous system, which goes into our muscular system, which goes into our, our larger, gross body. Um, so if we're thinking, oh, well, I'm just avoiding something and I want to look at it, well, get to know your body. Why are you avoiding that? Because that's a gift to you, too. Why are you saying this isn't good enough and somebody else's is better? Because they're both gifts, and if you're denying it, um, it, it why, what, you're denying it, you know? That's just, it's got that connection of avoidance. I, I want to pick on your uh, statement, get to know your body. That was my realization. Recently I said, or... It's energy, uh, it's sensing, it senses. We're using our amazing. senses, and our senses yeah. are with our body. Why would we ignore our body? Yeah. You can talk to your cells in your body. You can actually just talk to them verbally. Like you yeah. said, the manifestation, the power of the voice can really command the body. And we, we take it for granted. We, we forget about the, the ancient times and how these cultures can do that. Yes. Uh, I, I, yes, I, I realize that uh, we come here to study medicine. And some of us study medicine easy way by becoming doctors. And others study medicine hard way by becoming yeah. patients. Yeah. <laughs> but basically, by the end of the life, you are scheduled to learn your body. You can learn your body by learning it or by ignoring it, and then you learn it, you know, hard way. The pain here, the pain there, the pain here, the pain there, the pain here, and then at the end you are an expert. But in any way, you become an expert. But you know, if you study it voluntarily, you might not need. You might be excused from going into sickness. Laboratory. Yeah. It's given to us to learn it. Mm -hmm. It's kind of supernatural. It's one of the tasks we get that's, here at Soul. That's a really good point. Um, I know we're kind of pressed for time, but just to just to kind of reiterate that point that a lot of people say, "Why did I get sick? Why did I, I I do everything right?" For those you know who are experiencing certain forms of cancer or just a chronic disease, and they say, "I did everything I was supposed to do." And I like the point that you, that you make. It's because we're here to learn about the human body as part of incarnating here on this planet and so yeah you did everything right so you get to learn more yay for you and uh, you might have you might have done everything right uh, health wise but you didn't do everything right emotionally and you pushed down emotions and caused right. or, things right. to in, in uh, manifest yeah. that, that way so. and, that, and that again is another lesson right. of how emotions tie to our biology and we learn that through channelings and speaking to spirits they have concilium, they have consoles, and all they're worried about, their priorities, is are to give us uh, experience for the spiritual growth. And sometimes they don't see any other way than giving you a sickness, us a sickness, to to push us in the right direction. Like To open the mind. I was opened by, by, by Reiki. Jim was opened by Reiki. Just, you know, first I became a patient of Reiki. It was the only thing that helped me. And then I realized I can do it myself, and I can do Reiki myself. I do it like all the time now, and mm -hmm. and without that, I can't even survive. So I have, in fingertips, I have a proof of miracle every day. That's the way they give me the proof. I, I feel the energy flow, and I can feel the energy from others. So, and, and um, you know, help you, me, help me here. Yes, Max started off as my Reiki patient. That's how we got to channeling. So this is good. Like this is yeah. When I first got All here. Right. So the answer here is that, that. Uh, if you are not in Reiki yet, yeah, try to send the energy from you are in Reiki, but uh, try to send the energy from one hand to another, and you can feel even without touching how the focus of energy moves like like a little blow on your hand, and then take a stone and try to focus the energy with the stone, and you can feel that the energy is amplified. And then there is a whole world of energy hidden opening to you. And say no to drugs. Say yes to energy. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's. Um, 
Say no to drugs. <laughs> there's so much. Thank there's you. so much. We've been doing this for almost two hours. So. And there's, we're only on like question. I know. Five. We'll have to come back. <laughs> I know. Yes, yes. We'll have to come back. What the most important thing I think um, to wrap it up with is uh, credible sources. Like people are watching this, or, or they might watch it. Where do they go to find good research um, on to, to research? Well, anything about UFOs, anything about aliens, because there's lists out there. There's a ton of websites you can go to. Half of them you click on and you're like backing out slowly because you're like, this yeah. is really creepy. Yes. And where, where as you find you guys, it's very pleasant. You're, you're a very sincere group of people. Um, so who would you say, just in your experience, um, what are good credible sources for people to yes, look at? Yes, thank you for asking. Yeah. Um, I wrote my book one is on my website published. There is a lot of references, and my favorite reference is Bashar. 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 Bashar everybody loves Bashar. Bashar is so a channeler who is 27 years. He is the best speaker ever. I don't know anyone who can speak impromptu that well. As well. I mean, he is an incredible teacher. Uh, again, everyone chooses to their own taste. I prefer to stay a little more grounded than others. I like something tangible, something that can use in your life right away, something physical. Project Camelot, Kenny Cassidy and Bill, I forgot last name, and Bill. Uh, Project Camelot. Project Camelot is amazing. It's way darker. So if you don't have two nerves, I suggest doze it. Look at only the most important ones. And after you look at that, look at something very light. And there is a lot of much lighter sources, lighter channeling. That's, that's why I wanted to add, Max, real quick, was for the people out there that are interested in extraterrestrials, UFOs, um, uh, the hybridization programs, just take what you need. Find what resonates with you and take what, what you need in that moment because it's gets so overwhelming in the beginning. It really is. So right. take what you need and leave the rest behind and you might be drawn to something else. You know, you'll hear somebody talk about something that'll draw you over there, over here. So just take what you need in that moment. And there's a lot of wonderful sites out there. Yes. Yes. Uh, Rob Gothier's Enlightenment yes. Evolution yes. Network with the He Does Treb and Roxanne Swainhart. And, yes, Roxy. Uh, she's also incredible. And um, there's so many really good ones. Um, well, that's really good and heartening to know because yes. you do when you Google search it, um, a billion things pop up and yeah, uh, and it's when you're starting out, you're like, I don't know, I don't even know if I believe, you know, like, and it's yes. you get very intimidated and overwhelmed, just like Brian was saying very quickly. <laughs> uh, join, uh, uh, focus on positivity. Don't dwell on negative. Uh, there is so much conspiracy happening. David Wilcock right. is great. Uh, his book, uh, Source Field Investigation, is a very enlightened one. Source and Field Investigation. Source Field Investigations. Uh, his uh, talks are part on conspiracy and part on enlightenment. Choose uh, wisely. If you want to focus on conspiracy, you can bring yourself in, into darkness, and it's really hard to get out of there. So, those it with positive and negative. There is so much positive, but Life after death, focus on life, but research life after death. Uh, Michael Newton wrote two wonderful My books. My favorite person ever, Michael Newton, go ahead. Yes. <laughs> uh, Destiny of Souls and Journey, Journey of Souls. Journey right? of Souls. Uh, this is the great world of communication with spirits, which to my knowledge are dimension number seven. Yes. Yeah. And, and this is a very grounded. Um, this is hypnotherapy, psychological, um, treatment modalities. Um, incredible. I push this stuff on people all the time. They know I'm kind of crazy. I'm studying to be a hypnotherapist. Um, I would love that. Yeah. And do and it's very grounded and it and it's comfortable for people who need that bridge, that transition, because it is very grounded, researchable work that's been going on for the past decade or so um, that has produced validating. Um, I would even argue scientifically credible work. Um, so Michael Newton, Journey of Souls, Destiny of Souls. Check out TNI, the Newton Institute. That's my plug for yeah. those guys. Yeah. Uh, now, in terms of free search, uh, join your local community. We are globally speaking globally. Uh, Meetup.com was the first thing I found. I googled Rochester extraterrestrials. You know, simple search. 
And here is your four interest group, which which was incredible. We have an amazing group here, but in your local proximity you might find uh, U4 interest group and just visit them. They might be into conspiracy. They are not. They may not be open to channelings as much, but these are light workers uh, of a different kind, but they are very knowledgeable and certain things. Richard Dolan is our Rochester celebrity. His books are quite enlightened, not very much for Focus on conspiracy in a positive, in a positive way. How do you say his last name? Richard, Richard Dolan. D O L A N. Richard Dolan. Okay, he's from here. Yes. Yes. He lives in town. Proud to know him in person. He inspired my books. Yes, okay. I follow him. Uh, follow him, his path. He he first wrote the books and then went on television. I wrote my books and started my own. You call it TV, right? Yes. Uh, You'll be on Ellen DeGeneres pretty soon. No problem. What's that? <laughs> You'll be on Ellen. You'll be on Ellen pretty soon. Ellen? Ellen the show. Oh, he doesn't maybe, watch TV. Maybe he won't be. No, oh, he doesn't, oh, you know he doesn't have a TV. That's okay. Never uh, mind. He can join my show. Yes. She, there you go. Oh, Ellen, Ellen will come here. Ellen will come here. I can imagine. You know what? I can see Ellen coming here. You know what? I can too. <laughs> I can see her doing that. Though. Yeah, so some going. things I just block. I mean, I don't read newspapers, don't follow the news. Whatever news I find are from extraterrestrials. They update me on the news. Yeah. Or friends, whatever. Oh. Yeah, anyway. and that's the point I want to make, is that we're all being guided by spirit and and others. So we are, we are already being guided. So learning to trust that where you're being led to is the right place to be and not where do I need to go to next all the time. It's always that monkey mind going for the next thing. It's, it's you know... Trust that where you are is where you need to be in each moment. Not where do I need to go? I need a list because this is what we, this is the behaviors we're looking to take take down. Because when we're talking about if people are going for five hours and living a week, if we're going to put that week into the five hours, it's going to be on fast forward. If we're already living in fast forward, that fast forward time zips through our mind, and that's why we don't remember. If we learn to slow yeah. down this time, that time is going to slow down also, and we're going to catch it. You know what I mean? That is a brilliant point because I wonder if the um, really realize that. Right, the relaxation techniques, you know, stop the reading, stop the analyzing, shut your freaking mind down, lay down, and let your, let your nervous system calm down so that you can become more sensitive other than compiling the stress and compiling the stress by this mental energy because once you break through, you'll learn that mental energy, when you're taken to that next level, exudes so much more energy than the physical. I mean, okay. you're going to, when you're channeling and taking these spirits and you're integrating all these different energies all at once, um, it takes a toll on the body and you've got to build, you've got to, it's like rebuilding your new body over. Yes. Um, Relaxing. I like you know, all the time. Synapses and these wirings take Take, take place because if you're too tense, they're not going to reach. You need to relax and let some oxygen in. Oh, but but I learned how to calm down my mind. When I need the answer, I kind of turn it off and invite the answer. And I don't think anymore. I invite and it comes. My 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 one of the keys. Shut it off. It was, it was from Reiki. First, it, Reiki taught me how to calm down your mind. I lay down on a Reiki bed as a patient. Then the healer puts the hands over my head and gradually my mind stops and I don't hear the words anymore. I don't speak anymore in my mind. Now I even notice I don't, I cannot say anything because I'm kind of in a state where it goes beyond the words, right? So, yeah. so, so that is, meditation is about calming, down, calming and stopping the clutter and the voices in your mind, your own voice in your mind, and and kind of uniting with the, with your higher self. So the meditation, you know, now three times a day, twice during the day, one at, at night, I go, it's lay nice. down, and get into trance, go on the other side, but you know, the key there is to stop the clutter, stop the the voice, and stop, and and then in and. You know, the intention is to invite your higher self to reunite with my physical mind and kind of there is upload, download at that, that, that time happening. And there are many other ways, but the key, I guess, Reiki is uh, the easiest for Westerner to get into. Meetup.com, search for local Reiki share groups. I, for my friends, 
who live anywhere in the United States, anywhere in the Western world, I go to, on Google Maps and just find their place and say, find Reiki groups nearby, or on Meetup, find Reiki groups nearby through Meetup. And surprise, like five minute drive from them, there is a Reiki share group, active and beautiful. So do that for yourself. Give a gift for you several times a week or once a week. Go and put your hands on somebody else, and that heals you. You get healthier, you get more balanced, and then open that opens the door to all our awakening. And opening the heart, just smiling a lot more, just walking down the street sometimes, just by your smile, your presence. It just, it just, it's there's so much a connection to a lot of people. That is a connection that cannot be bought. Yeah, it's and priceless. Touch. Any time that you that it touches invited, you should do it because touch is part of who we were made to be. We were made to yeah, not to be alone. Why we have these bodies, or we just live through the internet? What, what's the point of this? Touch each other. Not. I'm not saying ooh, but I mean. That's good too, but uh, <laughs> but I mean, all kinds of touch is good. Hugging, you know, just giving a hey, good sturdy handshake, uh, putting your arm around somebody. It's just a wonderful connection. Like that. Yes, like that. Oh, that's a Kodak moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Westerners are sick of loneliness. Loneliness is the main sickness in the West. Uh, Eastern Europe, Brazil, South America, people touch each other non-stop. But Westerners, English culture especially, Very touches, yeah, touches mm -hmm. uh, and that uh, screws up the energy. So be near animals and children, even older people, but you know, especially the age difference makes the touch more permissive. Touching, I don't know. Probably to touch children. Children love no. to be touched. No, they do, but no. <laughs> no. Somebody else is, recently I was, I was, I was, yes, I was at Russian, at Russian <laughs> campsite and I was given a baby to hold. That was the happiest right. moment right. the last many years. I right. was. Yes. No, that's that is what I am. I want to hold a baby. You are. You're. He's a dad for sure. I have. Yeah, four children <laughs> here and three children up there uh, hugging once and. No, that's what I. So you're a good nurturer. Yeah, he likes. You really get that childhood, for the child energy. Yes. Not well. So Reiki but is another way to touch people. Reiki. I mean, yeah. ma massage, given foot massage, is uh, also a problem. wonderful. A foot massage. Can I, uh, can I interject Absolutely. Um, I just wanted to express that I, I, one of the greatest healings in my life, and something that I continued on with, is uh, actually becoming a massage therapist and an acupuncturist, I'm also a Reiki master, and yeah. every time I work on a client, I feel better myself. Um, it's an absolutely empowering, wonderful thing uh, to get away from that social bias uh, in the Western world, of, you know, where we don't touch each other enough, and be able to connect with someone on a, on a level using Reiki energy as well and, and with intention while I'm doing acupuncture as well as using the Reiki energy while I'm giving massage, uh, doing things like reflexology and uh, acupressure and things of that nature are just absolutely phenomenal because it's connected me spiritually with the physical world. Oh. And um, so I really uh, give you guys accolades. I'm so happy that it, uh, Reiki, you know, is more popular than I really thought it was because I uh, just relocated from the West Coast back to the East Coast and I'm seeing it come up a little bit more but it's it's not as uh, prevalent here quite yet as it is in California. Ah. Well, I do acupressure and Reiki at the same time. It was a method taught to me by Takur, one of the aliens. You use your fingertips to get the pressure points and the energy goes in also, it keeps the palm away from the, uh, doesn't always touch, and a uh, stronger energy can come from the palm if it's a, from a little distance. So, yeah. so it's... Um, uh, and there's no space or time. It's, yes. It, it's wonderful. It is. 
That's a and, long distance. And self-care. I know in the Vedic tradition, when it comes to yogis, it's all about, you know, after a shower, you oil down, and it's a it's a self-massage. You know, it's yeah. not everybody has the help or the money. It's and taking self care of yourself also. to massaging your hands and feet, you know, pampering yourself and learning to be kind to your body, and you'll learn to be kind to your heart. It's, oh, it's wow. all connected, mind, body, spirit. And when you're kind to your heart, you can be kinder to others. Mm -hmm. So, wow, so many things have been covered today. I mean, it was like a uh, huge tent thrown over the building. So you guys broadcasted this live, um, and then it will be up on your site. Yes. And then we will be launching our site officially. It will be called the Zenzuk Project. Um, Is it related to Zen? It's spelled, it's actually a German word. It's an origin of a German word um, that is characterized by almost, not almost, a mystical longing or yearning um, where you just, you never quite feel satisfaction regardless of how much you are self-actualizing or doing because you're not home. And so the point of this Zenzo project, which is spelled S-E-H-N-S-U-C-H-E, um, is... It's to bring, to realize heaven on earth, almost, and, and this is just one of the many ways that it happens. Um, so we thank um, Jim and Max today. Incredible. We will be back here. Yes, um, yes, yes. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Let's, let's come, come a, again together, schedule yes. a time, and continue. Yes. That'd be yes. wonderful. And thank you to Brian. So thank glad you. you could join us, too. Thank um, you so much. Yeah. And we hope that Misty Jen, will... Misty, we hope you learn how to use the computer so you can get on and show your face. Yes. Next, I will get your face. You won't be my that, phone. That, <laughs> that, that <laughs> <one thing. laughs> Oh, wonderful. Yeah, that would be wonderful. Uh, when you're coming, we'll have, we'll have to have another uh, time, but there's still yeah. plenty of questions left. Yes. Uh, that would be so fantastic. Thank you so, so very much for opening your mind and your hearts to us and... You know, educating us on on human colony. We're just so grateful and, and blessed to have this experience. I, we really appreciate this, it. This video will be also helpful to your project as well as uh, yeah, really, yeah. we'll bring people to your project. Yeah, yeah, nice. yeah we hope so too. That's yeah. wonderful time. Wonderful time. Yeah, I'm sure we'll be working very well together. Yes, yes, yes. we're in the same yes. town. It's a cool. It's a very cool <laughs> thing. That uh, something this important is happening right near us. Yeah. So, so I'm glad with that. Yeah. that. So let's do now the final blessing. We usually do the blessing. Um, Jen and uh, Jamie, would you be willing to start with a few words of blessing and then we'll pick it up? Um, I kind of come from a Native American tradition. So, so yes. Right. He loves um, that. Yep. You know, um, so really can't do directional things right here, but um, we just open it up to our to the great spirit um, and the grandfathers and the grandmothers and to our spirit helpers. We thank you so much for being here, for providing clarity um, and protection, and for encouraging us to use our humanity to come together and to express and learn and teach all these wonderful wonderful, amazing things, um, especially when it comes to spiritual development. And then I'll let Jen... Um, Jen, what would you... I'm a little more interactive, so I'm just going to do an OM, and you guys are welcome to join in. Very good. But first, and then an OM after the next, on the next inhale. So inhale. Words, and then do OM as the as ending part, okay? Perfect. Go on. All right. So I will do a few words, and then I'll give it to Jim. Uh, Inheriting human body, in embodying the body, living in the body, manifesting your spirit as a body is the key for ascension. Grounding is the way up. Being here now in this place physically, smelling, touching, hearing, acting, communicating, physically is the easiest way up, easiest way for sin. I, I have to reiterate that. Grounding is the way up because you connect to the ground, you move up to the next dimension. You're the tree grounded in the soil, moving up with your arms into the next level. So 
but I just see us moving out in a very positive way, in a very connected way, in a very loving way, in a very soft, um, magnetic way, if you will, to pick up others who are lost, who are searching, who are, are just dreaming of the time of connection, dreaming of the spirit that they want to connect with. So let us be part of that. Let us be part of the answer by asking more questions. So I just want to just give you my love and give you my whatever I any energy that I have for that purpose. God. Yes. And God ancient gods were separate. They were revered. Nowadays gods come as us. You are God. I am God. You are God, I am God. We are all hands and eyes of God. We change the world for God and we see the world with the eyes of God. That is the key essence of us. So we welcome God within ourselves and within you. Namaste. Namaste. And God experiences through us, so let's give him a good time. <laughs> So we're going to ground down with an exhale, and on the second exhale, project our hearts outward. Inhale. Exhale with a sigh. Inhale to Om. Uh, Thank you, Max. Thank you, Jim. Goodbye, everybody. Shutting down any second. See y'all later. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks for coming. It was wonderful. Wonderful. Bye, Jim. Bye, Jim. Much love. <laughs>